Hello, New Hope family. Blessings to you all. I hope that everyone is having a good Friday. What a blessing, and what a blessing is to celebrate His resurrection today. He died for us, and He was raised on the third day. What an amazing Savior we have. His name is Jesus. Jesus, our amazing Savior. And today, I am so blessed that you can join us. And uh, I want to talk about the blessings of living under the new covenant. And what a blessing is that you can join us from your home. And uh, I believe God is going to do amazing things today. I believe you, you're going to experience an incredible touch, an incredible breakthrough at the end of this uh, live video. And I believe the Lord is going to touch you and the Lord is going to do amazing things in your life. We're going to have a time of prayer. We're going to have a time of ministry. And we're going to have also at the end, we're going to have the leaders, the church leaders are going to jump on Zoom and we're going to be able to pray for you. We're believing that this is going to be an incredible, an incredible time in the presence of God. So join us, share this video with your friends. Because I believe this is a Good Friday. And the reason this is a Good Friday is because Jesus, He's alive and He's the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. He came more than 2,020 years ago as the Messiah, but soon He will come back as the King of Kings. And uh, I want to talk about the blessings of living under the new covenant. We understand that living under this covenant is the most incredible privilege that we have as believers. Those who have, those of us who have become born again, those of us who have accepted Jesus as our personal Savior, we have the most incredible blessing of living under this covenant, the new covenant that was available for all of us, made available for us to receive. When He died on the cross, He sealed off this this new covenant with his blood and he signed it off and he paid the price so that we can enjoy this new covenant and today i want to open my message you know by reading the scriptures in the book of hebrews chapter 10 verse 8 through verse 10 the bible says first he said sacrifices and offerings burn offerings and sin offerings you did not desire nor were you pleased with them, though they were offered in accordance with the law. Then he said, Here I am. I have come to do your will. He sets aside the first to establish the second. And by that will we have been made holy through the sacrifice of the body of Jesus Christ once for all. So we have to understand when he died on that cross... He was making provision for a new covenant to come into place. He fulfilled the old covenant. He fulfilled all the prophecies that were written about him in his life. In a short span of three years of ministry. And what a powerful ministry did he have. What an incredible message did he preach. What an amazing, amazing journey did he live. I mean, Jesus went through the most amazing journey. Three years where he saw signs and wonders. He saw people getting healed everywhere. He saw, you know, he raised people from the dead. He saw incredible miracles. But at the end of that journey, he went to the cross. He offered himself up as a living sacrifice to fulfill the old covenant and begin a new covenant. And when we understand that, when we understand the words that he said right before he died, when he said, it is finished. And those words are powerful. Those words initiated a new covenant. Those words began a new chapter in history. Those words began a new season in history. Those words set a precedent. Those words made history. Those words are still making history today. Because he fulfilled the old covenant and he ushered us into the new covenant. And that new covenant is available for all of us to enjoy.
That new covenant is the covenant of grace, the covenant of salvation. And what a good Friday this is. We celebrate Jesus' death and resurrection. We celebrate the price he paid for us on the cross. He paid that price for the atonement of our sins. And not only did he pay that price, not only did he go to the cross and he died, but he was raised on the third day. And so we celebrate his resurrection this weekend of Easter and, and Passover. We're celebrating two amazing things. One, the fact that he died for us and we have received salvation because of his blood. And two, the fact that he was raised from the dead and we are victorious. We are victorious because of him, because of the word, because of his blood. So today I want to talk about the blessings of this new covenant. This new covenant offers us, number one, salvation. Salvation through his blood, forgiveness of sins. In the book of Ephesians chapter 1 verse 7, the Bible says, In him we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins in accordance with the riches of God's grace. We have found salvation. This is the number one blessing of this covenant, that we have been redeemed, that we have been forgiven, that we are redeemed. See, when we stand before the presence of God, we stand as redeemed children of the Most High. And even when the enemy tries to bring guilt, fear, anxiety, accusation, we can stand before the presence of God as, as the redeemed children of God. And we can, we can be confident in Him. We can be strengthened by His Word. We can be strengthened by the fact that we are His, that we belong to Him, that we're not citizens of this world, but we are citizens of a greater kingdom, and that is the kingdom of God. And when we understand our identity, when our faith is anchored in the Word of God, we are immovable. We cannot, our faith and our love cannot be quenched. Nothing in this world can quench the love that we have for the kingdom, the love that we have for, for God. Nothing can separate us from the love of God. When we understand our identity, when we are anchored in the word of God, when we understand that number one, we have been redeemed. We have been forgiven. All of our sins have been forgiven. And we can come before the presence of God on a daily basis and find forgiveness. Because that provision was made available for you, for me, for your family, for your relatives, for anyone who opens their heart and says, Jesus, I want to invite you into my heart. I acknowledge you are my personal Savior. If we do that, and those who have done it, we know that we have received this amazing blessing, this amazing privilege of having the confidence and having the privilege of living under the covenant. So the number one blessing of this covenant is salvation. We have found salvation. Salvation is a free gift that Jesus paid more than 2,020 years ago when he died on the cross, when he said it is finished, when he carried that heavy cross, he provided that gift of salvation and is free of charge. You don't have to pay for this. You know, you may have to buy things. In, I mean, in this world, we buy uh, groceries. We buy, you know, we buy things with money. We have to use money to buy a house. We have to, to, to buy a car in order to get around. In order to, to do things, we have to use money and we have to buy things. But see, salvation cannot be purchased. Salvation is a free gift for all of us. And that gift was purchased with his blood. When he shed his blood more than 2,020 years ago, and he sealed off the covenant, and he made that provision available. See, now we can come before the presence of God. Now we don't have to, to you know, stand for hours and wait for the priest to come out of the temple and present our offering. You know, I, I just want to... Um, highlight the differences between the old and the new covenant. In the old covenant people, the Israelites, had to come before the priest once a year and they had to present their offering and they had to stand for hours. Imagine this. Let's put it into context. They were probably standing in the baking heat of Israel. They were standing with their lamb or their goat, you know, waiting for the priest to come out. 
And, you know, the offering had to be perfect. And, and there was a criteria that had to be met for that offering to be accepted. And they had to wait outside the temple for the priest to go inside and to get a response from God. And if the offering was accepted, then their, the, the forgiveness of their sins was assured. But they couldn't leave that place until they knew that their sins were forgiven. Can you imagine that? Can you imagine standing outside the temple waiting for your sins to be forgiven? Maybe sweating, maybe carrying that lamb, that baby lamb or baby goat and, and trying to stay, you know, trying to stay calm, trying to stay cool. But under the circumstances, you're feeling the pressure. You're feeling probably sweaty and tired. You've been there all day long. And not only that, the people had to go up the steps of the temple and present the offering to the priest. Now, I've been to Israel, and I can tell you that those steps are not small steps. They're huge steps in comparison to, you know, our steps, in comparison to a staircase that you may have at home. They're huge, and they're uneven. Now, imagine if you are wearing a gown, like in those days, they used to wear those long, you know, those, uh, uh, you know, dresses, those gowns, and and imagine if you're wearing that and you're trying to go up the steps and you're carrying an animal and you're waiting for the priest. Imagine the amount of effort, the, the, the time, the energy. You know, it was an exhausting process and it only took place once a year. Once a year, people were able to go before the priest and present their offering. But thank God for Jesus. He came as the ultimate priest. He came as the ultimate, as the high priest and as the ultimate sacrifice. And he offered himself as a lamb, as the lamb of God. And he died on the cross, but he was raised on the third day to give us, give us a path. He actually gave us the amazing blessing of, of having the privilege of walking into his presence. We don't have to have an offering. We don't have to present an offering. We can just go before his presence. We can call on the name of Jesus. And let me tell you something. When you call on his name, his presence will fill the room and you will have an encounter with Jesus. See, that is one of the most amazing blessings of living under this covenant. We don't have to go before a priest. We can go before the Father through Jesus. We can go, you know, into the Holy of Holies, into the holy place, and we can present our offering, which is our heart, our minds, our worship, and we can just have an encounter with Christ. And we can have an encounter with God on a daily basis. Can you imagine being separated from God for a whole year and having to wait, you know, only for that occasion when the priest would accept the offering and take it to God on your behalf? Can you imagine having to wait that time? Can you imagine having to carry with guilt and sins for a whole year, having to wait for that day, for that special event? Well, my friends, church family, now we don't have to wait. Now all we have to do is get on our knees and call on the name of Jesus and, 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 and open our hearts and receive the blessings of this new covenant. We have to embrace them. We're living in a critical time. We're living in a critical hour where the enemy is going to try to drag you back into those old habits, into those old addictions, into those old ways. But I'm telling you, there is power in the blood of Jesus. Can you say with me? There is power in the blood of Jesus. And there is power when we call on the name of Jesus. You may be facing right now a lot of fear. You may be facing anxiety. You may be feeling terrified because you just lost your job or something happened in your family. You may be feeling afraid because the number of cases in Australia are spiking and around the world and coronavirus is like the news of the day and everybody's talking about it and we're all feeling the weight of this world. But let me tell you something. I have good news for you. Jesus has overcome the world. The Bible says, fear not for he has overcome the world and he's given us assurance of salvation and that is the number one benefit the number one blessing of living under the covenant is that we have the gift of salvation we have grace we've been given grace and by his precious grace we can approach our father we can approach the Lamb of God and we can call on his name and we can receive protection we can receive a 
healing, we can receive a, a breakthrough. Let me quote some scriptures about the blood of Jesus. In Colossians chapter 1 verse 20 says, And through him to reconcile to himself all things, whether things on earth or things in heaven, by making peace through his blood shed on the cross. This is the message of Good Friday. His blood is a reminder to all of us that he has overcome. When we plead the blood of Jesus, we're basically reminding the devil, hey devil, you are a loser. I'm more than an overcomer because he made me an overcomer. I'm more than a conqueror because of his blood, because of the price he paid for me on the cross, because he paid the, the price of the atonement. He has atoned my sins. He has forgiven my sins. Now the enemy is going to try to bring guilt and fear in these days. It's going to try and make you feel guilty, especially because a lot of you may, may feel like you're disconnected or disengaged because you're not going into a physical building or you're not praying as much as you used to or you're not maybe reading the Bible because you have a lot of distractions around you and you're having to deal with family, you're having to juggle with a lot of things. Maybe you have a, a plate full of uh, you know things during the day and you're feeling guilty because you're not spending time with God and you're not spending time like you used to when you went to church and you worship for an hour in church but let me tell you something the church is not a physical location the church is not a four wall building the church is you and me we are the church we are the temple of the holy spirit and we can approach our heavenly father we can come before his presence on a daily basis because we are under this covenant and we can enjoy having encounters with god God on a daily basis. Isn't that amazing, my friends? Isn't that amazing, church family, that we can enjoy having this relationship with God? Now imagine for a minute. Imagine for a minute. Imagine what the feeling must have been for the Israelites to have been disconnected, have been disengaged, and feeling separated from God for a whole year, having to wait a whole year to present their offering. Imagine that. Thank God for Jesus. Thank God for the high priest. He came. He died on the cross. It was an excruciating death. It was a painful death. He carried your sins, my sins, and the sins of the world. And he carried those sins and he was thinking of you and me when he was on that cross. Even when he was standing, you know, he was there next to the two thieves as the Bible says. One was, you know, cursing him and basically saying, if you're the son of God, why don't you come down and save us? You know, and then you, if you remember that scripture, the other thief who was next to him, he basically asked Jesus, you know, when you, when you, can you, can you remember me? When you go to the paradise, when you go to paradise, when you go to heaven, can you remember, can you remember who I am? And Jesus said, you will be with me in paradise. He offered salvation and redemption right there and then to this man who the law had completely, you know, condemned him. And, and, and he was, he was standing standing there with two sinners, the Lamb of God, and he was offering salvation even before he before he died. He offered salvation to many. He, he went into many people's homes and before he healed the sick, he would pray for them and he would say, your sins are forgiven. Because that is the number one goal of the gospel. That is the number one goal of the kingdom of God, to, to, to give us salvation. We have received assurance of our salvation by his precious blood. Number two, I want to talk about healing. That is the number two benefit of living in his covenant. When you are under his covenant, you can enjoy healing. You can enjoy, you know, receiving a miracle. I'm a living miracle, my friends. I was healed. I've been healed of cancer. I've been healed of malaria. I remember a few years ago, I was in Nigeria. I was doing, a, I was there for a, a mission trip and I contracted malaria and I was dying. But Jesus, you know, the angel of the Lord came into my room. He was holding my hand and the Lord said to me, I heard the, the, the voice of God in an audible manner and God spoke to me and said, you are going to be fine. And in that moment, all the 
symptoms disappeared and I was able to recover supernaturally. What some people take weeks to recover, I only it only took two days for me to recover and I was completely healed of malaria. I mean, I believe in miracles. There is provision for us to receive healing. There is provision for us to receive uh, uh, miracles today. And no matter what you're facing, no matter what you're going through right now, there is provision available for you to call on the name of Jesus, for you to plead the blood of Jesus, to cover your family. No evil virus can touch you. No evil virus can come near your dwelling because you are covered by His blood. And every time you take communion, you are reminding yourself that you are covered by His blood, that you are redeemed, that you are chosen, that you are His, and the enemy has no power over your family, over your children. So I would encourage you, my friends, I would encourage the church worldwide to keep taking communion during this time of Passover during this time of Easter to keep reminding yourself of the power of the blood of Jesus to keep celebrating oh, oh, the next few days keep celebrating keep celebrating his death and resurrection he keeps celebrating the covenant that you can enjoy keep celebrating it number two in Isaiah in the book of Isaiah chapter 53 verse 5 says but he was pierced for our transgressions he was crushed for our iniquities. The punishment that brought us peace was on him, and by his wounds we are healed. I'm a living testimony. I was healed of a deadly tumor when I was eight years old. God supernaturally healed me, and that tumor disappeared. After praying for three months, I remember receiving a prophetic word, and the doctors couldn't explain it. You know, when, when I went back for, for that x-ray, they couldn't find a trace of cancer, trace of, a trace of tumor. It was gone. It was gone. Jesus healed me in one night. There is provision for you, my friend, to receive healing today. No matter what you're feeling, no matter what you're going through right now, you may be feeling uh, you know, sick, you may be uh, waiting for a surgery, you may be waiting for a medical procedure, and at this point, because the hospitals are overbooked, and they, you know, that there, there is this craziness out there in the world, and you, you're probably not wanting to go to a hospital, you're afraid to go and see a doctor, well, let me tell you something, Jesus may prevent for you today and as you receive and as you embrace this provision I believe the Lord is going to touch your body I believe the Lord is going to heal you and I believe we're going to heal we're going to hear powerful healing testimonies at the end of this broadcast and I believe that you are going to receive a supernatural miracle number three the Lord has given us freedom can you say it? Freedom. We have received freedom. We're not under the powers of Satan. We're no longer slaves of sin. We're no longer slaves of fear, anxiety, depression, discouragement. We have received freedom. The blood of Jesus has given us the provision to receive freedom. In the book of uh, John, chapter 8, verse 36 says, So, if the Son sets you free, you will be free indeed. You're not meant to be caring with that bondage. You're not meant to be under that generational curse. You're not, be, you're not meant to, to be oppressed. You're not meant to be dealing with depression. You are meant to be walking in perfect freedom. Jesus wants you to enjoy perfect freedom. And that freedom comes when you embrace the covenant. You are not meant to be 30, 40, 50% free. You are meant to be 100% free. He wants you to enjoy wholeness. He wants you to enjoy the fullness of the gospel. And that's why I believe in the full gospel. I don't believe in just parts of the gospel. I believe in the whole gospel. Jesus wants you to enjoy freedom. You're not meant to be carrying those monkeys on your back. He wants to get rid of those monkeys. He wants to get rid of the oppression, the, the discouragement, the fear, the anxiety. He wants to get rid of all that stuff. He wants to get rid of the baggage. He wants to get rid of all the stuff that is crushing you and weighing on you. He wants to get rid of all that stuff. And today you can receive freedom if you call 
upon the name of Jesus and if you plead the blood of Jesus, let me tell you something. There is something the enemy does not like to hear. He hates hearing uh, when, 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 when you confess and when you actually, when you state this, when you confess it, when you declare it, he hates hearing it. He hates hearing believers confessing the blood of Jesus. When you stand and you confess the blood of Jesus, when you plead the blood of Jesus, that is a reminder. The enemy is reminded that he was defeated more than 2,020 years ago. See, the enemy is going to be reminded. See, I tell believers all over the world, every time the enemy brings your past, every time the enemy, the enemy reminds you of the things you did in the world, you need to turn around and remind the enemy of his future because his future ain't pretty. His future is not looking very nice. As you know, the Bible says he's going to be condemned and sent into he's going to be condemned into the life of into the lake of fire he is going to be condemned for all eternity and all of us all of us who have been redeemed who are chosen all of us who have accepted this precious gift of salvation we will be rejoicing with Christ isn't that awesome we can walk in freedom today we can enjoy freedom today I don't know what you're facing right now. I don't know what you're going through. But I can tell you one thing. Freedom is available for you. And all you have to do is call on the name of Jesus. All you have to do is get on your knees and pray. All you have to do is raise your hands and say, Lord Jesus, I need you. I'm feeling vulnerable. I'm feeling like I'm going through the most critical hour of my life. And I feel like I need a, a breakthrough. If you're desperate for a breakthrough, if you're desperate because you may be feeling in absolute despair, you may be feeling very anxious because you don't know when this is going to end this you know quarantine you know I mean when you think about it we were not meant to be quarantined we were meant to have fellowship we were meant to be you know to be together we were meant to shake hands and hug and love on people we were meant to have that connection and what is going on right now is very 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 upsetting for a lot of people especially for those whose love language is hugging and shaking hands Hands and uh, you know there's nothing better like a good old handshake you know and now with all this social distancing and all the stuff that's going on in the fear and when you go into the grocery store and people are afraid to look at you they're afraid to even engage in a conversation you know there's this overwhelming sense of fear people are aggressive they're on the edge they don't know what's going on they don't know the end of this but let me tell you something those of us who have received Jesus those, who are, those of us who are under the covenant, we know the end. We know the finale of this movie. We know that Jesus is going to come back one day and He's going to rule and He's going to establish His kingdom. And we know that we are more than conquerors, that even though we're going through a, a present trial, even though we're going through a valley, like David said, even though I go through the valley of death, I fear no evil. Why? Because the Lord is standing by our side. He is holding our hand. He is holding your hand, my friend. Don't feel afraid. Don't feel anxious because you are free in Jesus' name. You can receive freedom today. No anxiety, no fear, no, no evil plague, no evil, no evil, you know, no evil die, no evil attack has room in your family. Now, you've got to believe this. You've got to embrace the promises of God. You've got to embrace the covenant in order to enjoy the covenant. And number four, we have access. We have access to His presence on a daily basis. Hebrews chapter 4, verse 14. And I want you to read it when you go home. You know, when, I mean, you're watching from home, but, uh, you know, I want you to open the Bible and read it in your own time. Read the whole scripture. It talks about the high priest. But I have a few scriptures that I would like to quote. And, and, and Hebrews 9.14 says, How much more then will the blood of Christ, who through the eternal Spirit offered Himself unblemished to God, cleanse our consciousness from acts that lead to death so that we may serve the living God? How much more? I mean, there is power in the blood of Jesus. I mean, I, I remember one time I was in India. I was staying, uh, you know, I was staying in a, in a nice hotel, uh, you know, in the night in, in, in this um, 
I think it was the ninth floor, you know, and, and uh, it was like three o'clock in the morning, and, and I, heard, I heard this bang outside my window, and I woke up, and I was startled, and, you know, you, I felt this fear, this wave of fear come upon me, and I, and I called reception, I rang reception, and I, and I was talking to the receptionist, and I said, uh, oh, did you hear that bang? I heard something outside, and she's like, no, there, there's nothing. I mean, it's three o'clock in the morning. What are you talking about? And, and, and I'm like, uh, but I heard a, a bang outside my room, and, and it was a really a powerful knock on the window. And uh, uh, you know, are you are you are you are you? I mean, what's going on? Do you know what's happening? She's like, no, I don't know. Anyway, it was uh, it was it was funny. She kind of uh, you know giggled about it and hang up, and and then I realized it was the enemy. I realized that there was an evil force trying to to bring fear, trying to bring anxiety. I was alone. I was st staying in that hotel room, and so I got up and I started pleading the blood of Jesus. And I remember I turned on the worship music and I started walking in, in my room. You know, I started to pray and quoting scriptures and I remember in that moment that evil presence left that evil presence left the room and the presence of God came and saturated the room there is power in the blood of Jesus you may be feeling anxious about you know what's going on in this world but if you call on the name of Jesus if you plead the blood of Jesus you will feel a breakthrough you will have a breakthrough in your life Hebrews chapter 9 verse 22 says, In fact, the law requires that nearly everything be cleansed with blood, and without the shedding of blood, there is no forgiveness. See, that was the law. Without the shedding of blood, there was no forgiveness. But thank God for Jesus. He shed His blood. We have access into His presence. We have access into the holy place. We can come before Him as we are, the way we're feeling. You may be feeling, uh, you know, oppressed and, uh, and you may be feeling uh, really, really, um, upset, disappointed because you never thought in your wildest dreams that you were going to be going through this and you probably, you're going back to you know those prophetic words that you were given and at the beginning of 2020 and you're like, well this doesn't look anything like I was promised. This doesn't look anything I was told. Let me tell you something, the enemy is going to use this time to crush your faith, but greater is the one who is in you than the one who is in this world. And the number five blessing of living under the covenant is prosperity. My friends, and I'm not talking about money or wealth, although that is a blessing and God wants to bless you and He wants you to, to live well. He wants you to, to, to enjoy the blessings of, of having more than enough. And that's, that's the meaning of the word prosperity in Hebrew. The word prosperity in Hebrew means having more than enough. You know, being able to pay all of your debtors, being able to have uh, no debt and, and, and having an overflow. So that is prosperity, my friends. And Jesus wants you to enjoy that prosperity. I, I know a lot of you have lost your jobs and you're wondering, how am I going to pay my bills? How am I going to cope with my financial situation? I feel like there is this crisis brewing outside and I have no control of that crisis and I'm feeling terrified. Well, I have good news for you. If you're living under the covenant, the blessing of prosperity is for you and your family. You are covered. You are covered by this blessing. God is your provider. The Lord is your shepherd and you shall not want. The Lord is your provider and he will provide for you in supernatural ways, in unexpected ways. All you have to do is open your heart. All you have to do is trust God, rely on him. You know, this is very difficult in these times to actually rely on something that you're thinking, well, I've relied on God all these years, but I don't know how to do it right now because I'm not able to, to, to go to church. I'm not able to, to do things that I used to do. Let me tell you something. There is power in the blood of Jesus. And right there in your living room, in your house, you can rely on these promises. You can call on Jesus. You can raise your hands. And you can, you can just call on Jesus and receive this blessing of the covenant. You are men to be free. You are men to enjoy freedom. Freedom is for you and your family. 
Let's recap. Let's talk about those five blessings of the covenant. Number one, salvation. You've been saved and redeemed by His blood. Number two, healing. God wants you to enjoy divine healing in these times. Number three, freedom. He wants you to enjoy freedom. He wants you to walk in freedom. Don't allow the enemy to drag you back to your past. You know, I've heard that some people are feeling like the enemy is dragging them back to their past. Like they're feeling so, you know, anxious, being indoors all the time and they don't know how to cope with this. And especially if you're dealing with a lot of things in your life and you feel like, well, this is, this is unbearable. Like being indoors, you know, being in this quarantine process, a lot of people feel like this is unbearable. Well, there is, prom there is a promise for you. You are meant to walk in freedom. Even if you are indoors. I mean, think about the Apostle Paul. He was, a, 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 you know, he was a, a prisoner. He stayed indoors for a long time, yet he wrote the epistles and he wrote the letters to the churches and he had encounters with God. And even though he was behind bars, he never felt like he was in prison. In fact, he was free. Because, see, when you are in Christ, you are free. You can enjoy freedom. No matter if you're indoors or you're outdoors or you're, you know, you're going or traveling or doing anything, God has given you freedom. And you need to walk in this, in this, in this blessing under the covenant. And number four, you have access. You have access to walk into His presence and encounter Him on a daily, on a daily basis. And number five, you can walk in prosperity. No matter what's happening in this world, no matter if the finances are not looking good, if your bank account is not looking good, if the stock market is about to collapse, you know, a lot of things are very unpredictable at this point. A lot of things are not looking good. The world is shaky and things are not looking good, but greater is the one who is in us than the one who is in this world. So that number five blessing is for you and your family. And for all of those who don't know Jesus, for all of those who are watching and you haven't made this decision of opening your heart and receiving Jesus as your personal Savior, I want to reach out to you. I want to extend a personal invitation. I want to ask you to stop whatever you're doing and listen to this message because this is the most important highlight of my message. This is the most important, you know, segment of this message. I believe that many of you will have an encounter with God today. I believe that many of you will receive uh, the gift of salvation. You may be going through a very difficult time right now. But let me tell you something. Jesus died on the cross. He shed His blood. He wants to offer you forgiveness. He wants to offer you redemption. You can receive forgiveness today. All of your sins can be forgiven in one second. And I want to invite you to receive this personal gift. It is a free gift. You don't have to do anything. All you have to do is close your eyes and say this prayer and acknowledge Him as your personal Savior. And you will. The Bible says that if you confess Jesus as your Lord and Savior, you will be saved. You will find salvation. I'm going to ask all of you to close your eyes. Maybe you can bow your head and say this prayer with me. You know, in this world, you cannot find hope in, in, in the material things, in the things that this world offers us. You know, you may be going through a very difficult time right now because you, you're having to deal with those addictions. And before you were able to go outside and, you know, get your mind off in another, you know, in another, in another you, you, you used to be able to do so, so many things. And now you're feeling so oppressed. So this message is for you. He wants to set you free. He wants to set you free. Open your heart and receive Jesus as your personal Savior. Say this prayer with me. Say, Lord Jesus, come, come into my heart. Forgive my sins. Thank you for dying on the cross. And thank you for providing for me and my family. Lord Jesus, thank you for cleansing my sins. I acknowledge you are my Savior. Thank you for the gift of salvation. I open my heart and I welcome you. And I thank you 
for the price you paid on the cross. Thank you, Lord Jesus. I receive you as my Savior. Please, God, forgive all my sins and thank you for setting me free today. Amen and amen. If you have prayed this prayer, I want to invite you to let us know. Maybe you can write a comment or you can uh, email us. Let us know how we can help you in your faith and how we can help you in your Christian walk. And we want to welcome you to this amazing family, the kingdom family, the church family. We want to welcome you and we would like to know, we would like to hear from you. So if you can write, you know, your name and let us know where you're watching from and let us know how we can pray for you or just send us an email and let us know how we can follow up with you. We would like to send you something so that you can continue, you know, standing strong in Christ. And I want to give you three tips now that you have made this decision. Number one, read your Bible. Even if you have a Bible that's dust, you know, has dust all over it, and go and undust your Bible and open it in the New Testament and read about all the amazing miracles, signs, and wonders Jesus did when he was here in this earth, when he was walking among sinners, and when he was preaching this gospel. Read about him. Number two, stay connected with this church or with a church nearby your community. A church that is preaching the good news and a church that believes in the power of the Holy Spirit. And number three, don't forget to pray. Prayer is that open line between God and you. Prayer is that open dialogue. You don't have to have fancy words. All you have to do is sit there and just have a chat with Jesus. Be real. Be candid. Just let Jesus know how you're feeling. He loves you and He wants to give you a really amazing, great life. And that life is available for you today. Thank you for joining us. If you need prayer, we're going to be available to pray for you. So we're going to um, share a link on Zoom for all of those who need prayer. If you need prayer for your relatives, if you need prayer because you are desperate for a breakthrough, a healing, you need prayer, you're in a, you need minister time, our elders are going to pray for you. So I hope that you can join us at the end of this broadcast. God bless you. Thank you for joining us today. Enjoy this Good Friday. And remember, there is hope in Jesus Christ. Take care and have a wonderful Easter.